What's going on guys? So here I am a little bit frustrated. Uh, I got the bike running. I wanted to take it for a spin and grab the clutch and it did not feel like it was doing much of anything. So there's really no pressure in the lever. And uh, this system was dry. At some point I took it apart and checked on the slave cylinder and it was all clean. Didn't hardly have to do anything to it, but I never put fluid back in the system. So I added fluid, pumped it down through as you would normally, but that's really hard to do and get all the air out of the system when the system's completely dry. So what I'm going to do is use a syringe and pull out the fluid from the reservoir here. And then I'm going to use that same syringe and pump fluid up through the valve down here. So the idea is you're pushing fluid up through the system and that should push the air out also, out the top. And then we'll probably have to bleed a couple times here at the banjo bolt just because air gets stuck in there because it's higher than the low point on the reservoir. So that's the idea. That's what I'm going to try to do. And hopefully I get it right this time. Now, the idea here, guys, is to get... I got my line here. It fits right on the end of this tube, luckily. And uh, the idea is to draw your fluid up without any air in it from your bottle. And then somehow get it over onto your nipple, again, with no air in it. And then open your nipple and push it through. So I can't really show you that and film at the same time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it and see how good I can do. So now that we're on here, I did have a little air in it, obviously from lifting it out of the fluid. So we're gonna work that air bubble up through so it comes out the top. You see, it's rising up because air is lighter than the fluid. I'm gonna let that rise up through. until it comes up above the plunger. It's right at the end and it has stopped. <laughs> Guess it doesn't want to go through the littler hole. Might have to tap at it. All right, now I give myself an extra hand. So I was able to set this syringe here. This is a 60 cc syringe. I got plenty more fluid than I need. And uh, you got the air bubble here at the top. You don't want to push that through. So I have full fluid filled down to here. When you crack this and you're pushing fluid down, make sure you shut it before you let off any pressure. Not that you're gonna have bubble, air bubbles in there, but, um, you don't want to reach the pressure and somehow let air in there anyway. So just like if you're bleeding it from the other end, you don't want to release pressure without closing the valve. I'm going to show you. Remember I, uh, I had emptied this reservoir and we're almost up to the top again. So that's coming from the bottom. So we're hopefully pushing the fluid up through and pushing the air out with it. I'm going to, I have another syringe here. I'm going to suck this dry again so that I can push just a little bit more up through. This is just a 3 ml. So I'm going to save this because it's pretty much new. Yeah, you should never put new, you should never put it back in the bottle because you're not supposed to use old fluid. Do as I say. Don't do as everyone does. This is hard with one hand. Oh, okay. So we're just gonna save that stuff because I use it. I'm just gonna pull one more out, maybe two. So I can refill this again. All 
I just want my clutch to work. That's what we all want, right? Okay. I'll take one more. All right. Well, I got her filled back up here. I don't know if this is tilted wrong or what, but the window is definitely full. As you can see here, it's not full in here, but it's okay with my boot over there being so distorted. This might work okay without pushing any out the overflow holes. So I'm going to work on pumping it up, letting some air out, see how we do. Alright, got to pump it up real slow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're going to hold it in. Give your banjo bowl a crack real quick. Now you can let it out. <laughs> you guys went for a ride, but you heard that, didn't you? You heard that spritz? That was air coming out. All right, now we're going to try it again. One. Ooh, I felt some pressure. Two. Ooh, three. Four. Oh, it's starting to squirt out the top too. That is a good sign. Five, six. We got pressure, guys. We have pressure. And it's squirting out the top. This is why you actually stick your cap on because it can make a mess. Now I'm just going to hold this here. One, two. It doesn't matter how many times you do this. Three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Guys, this is better pressure than I've had all along. You're going to fall off again probably, but I'm going to squirt this real quick. I made it too tight. Oh, that's the wrong way. Wait, no. Which way is it going? This way. There we go. Didn't hear any air come out. I loosened it, tightened it. Just fluid came out. That means there's pressure in there. And I'm still holding my lever. So I closed it up. Make sure it's tight enough. Now you can let your lever out. This is great. We have pressure. And I'm gonna do it again. One, two, three. Four, ah, squirting out the top. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm gonna go to the bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom nut. Now I can open this up. There's a little bit of air came out there, but I'm betting you this time we're good to go. Okay, I did two more times down there at the foot at the uh, slave cylinder. It's good to go. I've got lots of pressure. One, two. Oh, she's just popping out at me. Keep forgetting to put that over there. Three, four, five, six, seven. So she is pressurized. I have no doubt that we are good to go. I'm gonna to top this off and put the lid back on, make sure everything's clean, wipe everything down once the lid's on with some soapy water. And uh, the clutch will be bled and working. So we can take her for a spin. All right, guys, for the first time, 
on the channel, I believe. Presenting the 1982 Honda Magna VF700C 750cc and uh, presenting it hopefully as running with a seat. Notice I didn't put the tank bolts back in. I may have an air leak I need to look at, but that's not gonna fly up, right? Right? All right, so. The firm lever here tells me I think we have a clutch. So I should be able to ride this down the road with no issues. So let's hope for the best. I'm gonna go get my helmet and my GoPro and see if she's a winner. Look at that, she even has two side covers. All right, we're gonna hope for the best. Okay, after multiple failed attempts to get this clutch working, I decided this might be just one more oversight on my part. Last season, the clutch stopped working. I took it apart thinking I needed to clean the slave cylinder and you know what, it was super clean and I was happy with it and I don't know, remember what I did. I remember putting it back together, that's all I know. Uh, left it sitting dry without brake fluid in the system all winter, maybe longer. And I think what's happening is this piston may not be moving. I think that's the problem because I have no air on this side of the system. See, basically, let me put this down for a second. Basically, you have your reservoir full of fluid. You pump this, that creates pressure. It pushes pressure down through the line via the brake fluid comes through here goes through here and then pushes the piston which is in this that's the piston in there that has a seal around it and I think that's what's getting stuck because then that piston pushes this rod in through the engine onto the other side and opens up your your uh, your plates so that your clutch your clutch plates there you go so that your clutch plates disengage and then you can shift into gears mine's not disengaging so either this is failing or my clutch plates are stuck on the other side I just thought of that but let's hope this is failing because I have it off already 10 minutes couple bolts a bit of fluid all the work I did all afternoon out the, down the drain but I'm gonna free this up I'm gonna shoot a little air through here and uh, see if I can push this clut push this guy out and then reassemble it, put it back together. Hopefully then we're good. If not, I guess we're pulling clutch plates apart. Here we go guys. One puff of air and that popped right out. This is your piston. Here's your scraper seal. I think I have that on the right way. Makes sense. But I'm looking at this and thinking, that looks a little bit rusty. That may have been stuck in that bore. That may not have been moving. So I could pump it up as much as I want until all the pressure. And if it was not gonna move, it was not gonna move and do its job. So I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, uh, steel wool, clean this edge up and stick it back in, re-bleed the whole system and hopefully get back into business. All right. Okay, now if you saw that before, it was kind of rusty. Cleaned it all up. I ended up using 400 grit sandpaper on the edge to try and clean that up. But that is not focusing. There it is a little bit. So I'm going to hope this is it because like I said, the other option is having to go in and free up the, the clutch plates, which I do not want to do. I don't know if it would be smart to kind of force that rod through. Maybe... Hit it a couple times with the mallet. Uh, that doesn't sound like a good idea. But it might help. I don't know, maybe I'll try it. I don't wanna do it. I don't wanna do it, but I should, I don't know. Anyway, don't wanna break anything. Once you get it back together, hey look guys, back to square one and bleeding. 
pump, 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 hold, open, close, let go.